Britannia. Britannia rules the waves. Britons never, never, never will be slaves. You enjoyed that, didn't you? Oh, very I thought much. you were going to, you know, burst into song like uh, Andrew oh, Pearce did earlier. I wouldn't put that up on the audience. They don't, <laughs> don't want to hear my awfully out of tune but incredibly enthusiastic singing. Yeah, email if you'd like me to sing it, because I'm very, very willing. <laughs> You're a lot better at I'm singing very than I am. willing, very willing. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, a once rousing patriotic anthem is now considered alienating. That's according to Shadow Culture Secretary Thangam Debonair. Well, one person who's certainly not shy of singing is GB News presenter Nigel Farage. Let's take a listen. Uh, it makes you pine for the days when we used to have a navy, doesn't it? Look at that enthusiasm. <laughs> Melted well, that out. Well, let's debate whether or not this anthem should be scrapped, should be uh, considered to be uh, part of the roster of patriotic songs in this country. Joining us is author and broadcaster Rebecca Reed, who thinks the anthem is controversial, and the leader of UKIP, Neil Hamilton, who does not think the anthem should be scrapped. Well, um, let's start with you, Rebecca. Why, why is this anthem uh, controversial? Why can't we celebrate how uh, Britain once ruled the waves. So I have two issues with it. First of all, I think it's quite rubbish. The scansion really? is so bad. In the words, never, never, never shall be slaves. You have to extend it to make it fit. It, it's not a good piece of writing. So that's my first <laughs> issue. My second, and I was actually quite surprised. I was at an event once and I was with an Irish friend and the song came on. We were about 19 and I was kind of, you know, going along with it. And she was like, I absolutely no way would I ever be able to sing that song. And I was like, why? Why is that a problem? And she's like, it's celebrating the dominance, particularly in her specific experience of, over the Irish, of the British. It's a really uncomfortable sort of show-off song about how they had ownership and how they controlled things. And it, it particularly harks back to things like the East India Trading Company, which is a pretty icky chapter absolutely. for us. So, yeah, not into it. Rebecca, surely for an Irish person, it's England that is the... Perfidious, for perfidious Albion. It was Oliver Cromwell and England. Britain is a more universal expression of these islands, surely. I mean, that, that wasn't how she felt. She <laughs> felt very much she didn't want anything to do with it. And she certainly didn't want to celebrate a time where the Britons felt they could go around talking about how great they were and how they owned everything. Because I just don't think, I think it's a chapter of our history that we shouldn't personally, individually feel guilty for. I don't think that we should walk around crying all day because our country did bats and bad things. But I also don't necessarily want to celebrate a chapter mm. where, we, where we sought to assert dominance over other countries. Neil, what do you make of that? You were uh, having a little shake of your head. <laughs> Sorry to say that Rebecca was just talking a lot of unhistorical rubbish. Uh, Rural Britannia has nothing whatever to do with empire or domination over other countries. It's actually a hymn of praise for British liberty, which is preserved by the strength of the British Navy in the 1730s and 40s when this song was written. Uh, and the contrast was between England, which was largely uh, the... Uh, uh, the, the country in, in those days, only just after the uh, union with Scotland, uh, had preserved its liberties as a result of being able to stop foreign invasions like the Spanish Armada, whereas in the 18th century, the continent of, of Europe was riven by internal wars with armies invading countries who were next door to them, and all of them controlled by absolute monarchies. Uh, and, uh, you know, Britain had got a constitutional monarchy, developing, of course, but nevertheless, in contrast with all our continental neighbours, Britain was a beacon of liberty for them, actually. Uh, and uh, so Rural Britannia, all it does is to celebrate the fact that Britain had maintained its own sovereignty as a nation and its own laws, and we weren't therefore subject to domination by others, rather than, as Rebecca was saying, uh, a hymn of praise to Britain as it dominated over others. And after all, let's not forget that it was the British Navy that suppressed the Atlantic slave trade. So it's just as well that we did rule the waves in the early 19th century when we stopped the, the uh, horrible uh, tradition of slavery being exported from Africa to the New World. So I'm 
very much in favour of celebrating that and singing Rule Britannia as lustily as we possibly can. Well, Rebecca, that's a good point. What's wrong with celebrating British exceptionalism? I don't think there's anything wrong with celebrating British exceptionalism. I just think that the exceptionalism that we celebrate could maybe not be about dominance and uh, control. And I think the word slave is quite a loaded one these days. The suggestion that Britain never, ever, ever, so many nevers will be slaves feels like an unnecessary uh, arena because yes, absolutely, we were instrumental in ending the slave trade, but we also directly benefited from the slave trade. And there's just so much great stuff that's British that we can sing about that doesn't need to allude to this. Like the national anthem is great. It doesn't matter what your cultural identity is. It doesn't matter what creed you are, what religion you are. You can get on board with it. It's easy peasy. Nice. Also, the words all fit too. Not if you're a Republican, is... I guess. <laughs> sure, well, absolutely. But, that, but but I think the Republican is you don't. Yes, absolutely. There are plenty of them in this country, but it's not tied to any class, religion, ethnicity, or anything else. It's a personal, individual choice that you get to make. And and I think yes, it probably would be alienating to Republicans. But Republicans love feeling alienated. It's a fun. <laughs> It's a fun activity for them. their entire identity. <laughs> well, let's throw that back to Neil. The word slaves here is perhaps a problem. It's not a problem for me. I mean, who wouldn't uh, uh, support the words of the song, which is an exhortation to freedom and against slavery? I mean, it's not Britannia rules the waves, it's Britannia rule the waves. Those, are the, that was the, those were the words in, in the song. Uh, and it's an exhortation to us to maintain our freedoms. And indeed, as a result of our dominance over the seas in the 18th and 19th century, to extend those freedoms to other benighted folk who haven't had the benefit of British government in the past. Uh, and uh, so yeah. I personally think that Britain's history has uh, masses of things to be yeah. celebrated. And the trouble with the left is, you know, they're ashamed of Britain, ashamed of patriotism. I mean, George Orwell s said that, you know, a British lefty intellectual would be more embarrassed by being found standing for God save the king, than to be found stealing from a church poor box. And that's the trouble with the left. Uh, yeah. And Thangham Debonair uh, and the, the Labour Party fundamentally, of course, don't believe in patriotism. Um, Keir, uh, Keir Starmer said, I think, on Desert Island Discs, his favourite piece of classical music was um, w w was um, the Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, the the anthem of the uh, of the uh, European Union. He did. So, uh, a party which is against you know, British independence, because he was one who wanted a second referendum on Brexit, would certainly be against seeing Rule Britannia, because they're ashamed of their own country. And I don't think they're in, in, in roots with the ordinary instincts of the people of this country. Just lastly, Rebecca, are the left to blame for stoking up the culture war? I mean, the right are often accused of it, but actually it's the left who want to uh, talk about getting rid of songs that most people find unifying. No, I'm not sure that's fair. And I don't think to suggest that the left are ashamed of this country is fair either. There is a lot about this country that I celebrated just wouldn't be the same things. I'm from the country of Emma Thompson, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, the BBC, the good life, Felicity Kendall. I'm from that side of things. I like the creative, the the lovely, warm traditions. I like the writing and the music. I like that. I just don't like the bit where we used to go to countries and stamp out their religion um, and tell them how to live. Uh, but you, there are lots of ways to be proud of being British. That. I'm glad that we can all have different ways of being proud to be British. Well, there we go. At least we can agree on that one, that we all can be proud of Britain for different things. We can all be proud of Phoebe Waller-Bridge. How about we settle on yeah, that? Yeah, we'll settle on that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rebecca Reed and uh, Neil Hamilton there.